In the opening scene, we are introduced to a woman named Nita Hook, who lives alone in a small apartment in the north of England. She works as a sales assistant at a store called Posset, specifically in the footwear section. She spends her day opening up the store, helping out customers, and doing everything she can to be the best employee in her boss's view. However, she is often bullied by her fellow co-worker Vicky, who often makes her cut her lunch breaks short and deal with difficult, arrogant customers. One day, she is even asked to deal with a suspicious man named Keith Holigan who is rumored to have killed his wife. He also looks like a big old pedo. In the midst of all this, the town is politically charged, and a conservative government is on the rise. Most of the population hates the immigrants and wants them out of the country. It is then shown that the year is 1979, and a local leader named Michael Smart is trying to gain power. Nita also faces racism and alienation due to her Indian background. The people in the street give her suspicious, side-eyed glances, while Vicky hates the fact that she eats Indian food. The combination of these negative experiences makes Nita harbor violent fantasies when she meets arrogant customers, but she never acts on them. One day at work, the manager, who seems to have been tipped by Vicky, asks Nita to eat her Indian lunch in the basement in order to avoid any potential smell. Nita innocently complies and heads to the basement during her lunch break. There, she stumbles upon a collection of old newspaper clippings detailing various tragic events. Among these clippings, she discovers a peculiar stone with an engraved symbol. When she proceeds to pick up the stone, she accidentally cuts her finger, smearing blood on it. Regardless, she she secretly stuffs the stone in her pocket before leaving the basement. Later, back at her home, Nita takes the stone in her hand. To her astonishment, she hears a voice coming from the stone. The voice introduces itself as a demon named Gap and reveals that the stone she is holding is a powerful talisman. The demon tells her that by inadvertently marking the talisman with her blood, Nita has become bound to a chilling obligation to carry out three human sacrifices, or else the world will meet its end. As Nita doesn't believe all of this, but the next second, the demon takes on a terrifying physical form, scaring the life out of her. When she continues screaming, Gap transforms into Nita's favorite singer from the band Boney M. Nita is unable to believe her own eyes, but Gap goes on to say that they must execute one person per day in order to prevent the impending apocalypse. Overwhelmed and uncertain, Nita initially considers the entire situation to be a mere hallucination and tries to ignore the entity's demands. However, Gap removes her by revealing a glimpse of a world in ruins with a simple snap of his fingers. Driven by panic, Anita storms out into the dark night and comes across a 39-year-old man named Tim Simons, who is walking his dog under a bridge. Gap, who follows her everywhere, urges her to make her first sacrifice. When Nita hesitates, the demon claims that Tim is a bad person, who preys on his own 12-year-old daughter. He even shows her a vision of that disgusting scenario. This is enough to persuade Nita, and filled with rage, she uses a brick to strike Tim on the head, killing him instantly. However, right after she commits the deed, she returns home and throws up. She is unable to sleep the whole night as the memory of what she has done weighs heavily on her mind. At one point, she even contemplates surrendering herself to the police, but Gap stops her, warning her that failing to complete the remaining two sacrifices will result in the apocalypse. The demon advises her to pretend as if everything is normal, so that she can avoid arousing suspicion from anyone. The next day, the police find Tim's lifeless body beneath the bridge and start an investigation. Meanwhile, Nita goes about her usual routine at work, pretending as if nothing has happened. Gap continues to follow her, persistently encouraging her to select her next victim. However, Nita ignores him and heads straight back home after work. When she spends the entire day without killing anyone, Gap warns her that failure to do so will trigger an apocalypse and even shows her news of a potential nuclear war between Russia and the US as evidence. This makes Nita realize that he is speaking the truth, so she selects a weapon of choice, which turns out to be a hammer. She then heads to the local bar for a drink, hoping it will give her some courage. At the bar, the two spot Keith, and Gap confirms that the man indeed killed his wife. This means that Keith is perfect for their next target. He also still looks like a big old Pedo. Meanwhile, the bartender and a barmaid notices something amiss about Nita. She appears to be talking to herself, unaware that she's communicating with Gap. A short while later, Nita follows Keith out of the bar and approaches him, who then invites her to his place. As soon as they arrive, Nita takes out the hammer from her bag and gets ready to kill him. But just then, a scared Keith confesses that he is a bad person and that he feels guilty about everything he did. Despite this revelation, Nita, with only six minutes until midnight, strikes Keith in the head 
repeatedly until he dies. Later, as she is about to leave the house, Keith's brother Chris enters and notices Nita with her blood-stained jacket. In an attempt to erase all evidence, Nita ends up getting in a scuffle with Chris and stabs him fatally with a kitchen knife. Upon returning home, Nita is racked with guilt, because this time, she killed an innocent person. Nonetheless, Gap insists she must move on from the incident as her assignment of killing three people is now fulfilled. But surprisingly, the talisman symbol still indicates that the apocalypse has not been averted. Perplexed, Gap contacts his higher authorities to inquire, only to learn that Keith's death does not count towards the ritual's completion because they can't kill murderers as part of the ritual. It means that Nita must still take one more life to fulfill her task. This infuriates Nita, and she puts the blame on Gap, also claiming that she won't carry out any more murders. However, the demon admits that he wasn't aware of all this. Furthermore, he reveals that not completing the task would make him fail his initiation, and he'd be banished to oblivion forever. Hearing this, Nita empathizes with Gap's situation, feeling a connection as an immigrant who struggles to find a sense of belonging, particularly after her mother's passing. Hence, she reluctantly agrees to undertake her final task, and together, they seek to determine their last victim. While at work the next day, Nita and Gap plan to target Vicky, who consistently mistreats her. Just then, Tim's grieving wife and daughter walk into the store to buy a pair of funeral shoes. While serving them, Nita feels very bad for the little girl, but Gap consoles her, saying that her actions have saved Tim's daughter from a future of misery. Later on, as Gap is pushing Nita to choose between killing Vicky and her boss, the local political leader, Michael Smart, enters. Following this, the boss calls out to Vicky as the best employee and asks her to serve Michael. As the two talk, Nita learns that Michael is a racist individual who absolutely hates immigrants. He promises to remove all of them from the country once he comes into power. Enraged, Nita changes her target to Michael and asks Gap to show her his future. As he does, Nita learns that Michael will be creating a complete destruction of the world by declaring war in the future. Gap pleads with her to select a different target, claiming that his superiors won't be happy with the sacrifice of Michael, but Nita has already made up her mind. She then leaves the store, taking a red leather jacket she'd been eyeing for a long time. Hmm, now she kind of looks like a pedo herself. On the other hand, a team of police officers led by Len Fisher is investigating the initial murder. As they struggle to solve the first case, they come across the deceased bodies of Keith and Chris. Upon investigating further, they learn that Keith was at a local bar the previous night, prompting them to head towards the site. The bartender tells them that he saw an Indian girl acting weirdly, referring to Nita. In addition, the barmaid also discloses that Nita drank two glasses of alcohol alone, and on top of that, she was much to herself. Later in the evening, Len visits Nita's residence to conduct a formal inquiry. He questions her about Keith and whether she saw him at the bar the night before. Cleverly, Nita pretends that she does not know Keith and has never heard of that name before. With this response, she manages to dismiss the police officer. After Len leaves the house, she goes back to Gap and continues planning Michael's murder. A few hours before midnight, Nita and Gap drive to the town hall where Michael is giving a speech and wait for him outside. Unbeknownst to them, Len, who is still suspicious of Nita follows her to the town hall. As Michael walks out of the hall and starts driving away, Nita pursues him. While pursuing Michael's car, she notices Len through her mirror, but she manages to shake him off her tail when they pass through a closed railway crossing. After a little bit of a car chase, Nita hits Michael's car, causing him to lose control and skidding him off the road before hitting a tree. Although injured, Michael survives the accident. Seeing this, Nita retrieves her hammer from her car and walks towards Michael with the intention of killing him. However, before she can do so, Len arrives at the scene and intervenes, preventing her from carrying out the gruesome act. After this, Nita is handcuffed and taken into custody. At the police station, Nita confesses everything, including the existence of the demon Gap and the dire consequences she was told would occur if she didn't fulfill the killings. She explains how she believed that not carrying out the murders would trigger a nuclear war, causing global devastation. However, this only makes her look like she's mentally unstable. As the minutes count down and the clock strikes midnight, an eerie silence envelops the surroundings for a brief moment. Suddenly, the air raid sirens outside begin to blare, prompting all the officers to rush out to investigate. To their utter shock, they discover that Nita's grim prediction has come true. The world is under nuclear attack. Meanwhile, Gap appears before Nita once again. Now that they are unable to complete the sacrifice, the demon will be banished into eternal oblivion. As a result, Gap offers her to accompany him in eternal oblivion, which Nita agrees to after a while of deliberating. In the final scene, Gap and Nita exchange glances as they walk away away together while the world burns behind them. Subscribe for more videos like this. 
turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.